putting, yeah. Yeah. I'm putting this video on <laughs> on, on, on Facebook immediately. Are we on air? If yeah, you, well, yes, well, we are now. If you want to know you. what Mamavi has been telling us, <laughs> I love you. We'll put it up in just a moment. Well. In fact, yes. let me put it up this now. This is definitely Ajoya another Ajoya. one of Ajua Boys. Uh, collection definitely would I love this one. Would the creator. So if you don't want to go with the uh, how do we call this the pure fabric, you can get the combination. So you can get the plain, wow. Wow. and that's what I've done. That's the combination yeah, so that I have did. So Ajoy this is well. all. Um, Woodin Le Creator and designed by Ajua Yebwa. You said he's around where? She's around the Fishy Labo. West. West Labo. <laughs> fishy Labo. No, fishy Labo. Westlands. Uh, Ajua is, is at Westlands, but you know, we, we, she's Westland. easy to reach because she's on Facebook as Ajua Yebwa Clothing and she's on wow. Instagram wow. as Ajua Yebwa Clothing. Clothing. So you can always wow. get in touch. You look wonderful. Honestly. You look wonderful. Thank you, darling. Yeah. Thank I you so you. much. Mm. I can rock this with How jeans. How did the as liquid well. go? Do you, you got in lots of liquids yesterday? Yeah, yeah lots tried. of it, lots of fruits. Uh, but yeah. the cold was was yeah. getting rather very serious. So I had yeah. to get some drags as well. I still have so. a feeling that you still have it though. You're, yeah. You sound a bit nasal. Too. Yeah. But you're yeah. a trooper. So I'm Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah. In spite yeah. of you know not. Yeah. yeah. So please so let good. me do just a little of the job today. Uh, Charlie, so you have no problem. Um, one so thing yeah. though, when when I see that your argument is better than mine, I'll remind you you have a cool so that you. you uh, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> That's not the plan. I'm not arguing. You never loses an argument. <laughs> well, Mr. Donko, you're watching us from Ikitura again. Good morning to you and Dr. Sante. You're in California. Mm. Where did you get this? Um. Don't let me mention the second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pharmacist Sally for combat. Uh -huh, that's where you got it from. Yeah. <laughs> Presbyterian Hospital Boko. Mm -hmm. And uh, through the assistance of the wife, mm -hmm. who is a, an assistant superintendent with the Ghana Immigration Service near the Missiga border, mm -hmm. Flora. Flora and, so this uh, was Ayiga. confiscated, I guess. No, and this one was not. No, this one is not from Burkina Faso. Ah, this okay. one is from Ghana, uh -huh. right here, mm -hmm. customized. Okay. And um, no imported because, goods. Because I'm wearing this, he's promised to bring me more. Hey, and no. Uh, Salifu. No, no, no. God, God bless you Kojo, in advance. We know him. He, he, in 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 Salifu more more advance. Said that. <laughs> so Roland, we're doing the papers. Oh, it's okay, okay, but it's you okay. shouldn't I thank anybody yeah. for what yeah, happened. Yeah, Or even who don't like it. No, we, we I love, love it. it. Thank you. We love it. Chocolate. I don't like it. I love it. We oh, it thank chocolate. you. Yes, uh, Bediaku of Chocolate Clothes, yeah. oh. GH. You can find him on social media as well. Instagram, yeah. Facebook, chocolate. Twitter. So this is chocolate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. He makes the, he makes me look good. I thank him for that. Okay. Yeah. Small, you can do yeah. the it same for really you. Nice. His clothing, Boris Kujo, where all this before. Why yes. you, and I hope you want to take the shine out of Boris Kujo and all this. <laughs> Boris, only you. No <laughs> one even now, I think okay, I, have to, I have to call him up. I think it's so time for us to do the newspapers. What do you say? Yeah, I think it's time to. Okay. Yeah, let's look at some headlines. I've got the Daily Guide and a few others, the Daily Graphic as well. Uh, let me do um, those. But before we start, we have to say today is um, World Teachers Day. Mm. Or, yeah. That's yeah. true. Yes, yes. And um, the Supreme Minister uh, for Education has uh, celebrated all Ghanaian teachers. Um, who was your favorite teacher in primary school? Hmm. Primary, primary. Mm, no, I'm thinking. Mm. I only remember my um, JHS teacher who used to lash us. Yeah. Math, math teacher. Yeah. Can't remember his name right now. In primary school, mine was says. Mrs. Aoku. And in secondary school, it was Ms. Ford. Mm. Say, of oh, course. Ms. Ford. Yes, Linda Ford. Like Ford? Mm -hmm. Like Ms. Professor Ford? Ms. F Ms. Ford. <laughs> Yes. Okay. okay. All right then. Uh, but you know what? To celebrate uh, teachers here in Ghana, why don't we speak to Faustina Copson? Uh, and of course, um, she is one of the teachers for us to celebrate. Uh, let's speak to her now. Um, she's, I think she's currently the national best teacher for 2017, yet to hand over. So while she's reigning, uh, Madam Copson, good morning. Good morning. How nice to hear from you. And of course, today is your day, isn't it? Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, I mean, tell me, most people who are good at their job find a lot of fulfillment in it. Uh, is that the case for you? Sure, sure. I've been saying over the period that this job is a calling. And so you need to have the fulfillment within. Then you can produce. Mm. And so for me, I am always fulfilled seeing my kids and seeing them to work with them. That's wonderful. So which uh, which year groups do you teach? I teach primary one. 
Oh, wow. At the very yes. beginning of their uh, exactly. curious lives. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Now, of course, today we're trying to celebrate all teachers around the world. And uh, there are many who, you know, pretty much ignore the contribution that teachers make uh, to their lives. If you had a moment to tell people why teachers are so important, what would you say? Um, teachers are important because hmm, right from the onset, the teacher is there. Right from the home, education is going on. And so the work of the teacher can never be underestimated. We are doing so much, we are doing so well. We mm -hmm. are the nation builders. In fact, no teacher, no nation. That's because it. talk of all the profession, and we say that the teacher taught them all. We did it all. Indeed. So tell me, do you think here in Ghana we uh, give teachers the credit that they are due? Well, here in Ghana, I would say not too well. Not too well. Because even among your peers, if you don't really carry yourself well, or people see you and they're like, what you're doing? And you say, oh, I'm in education. And they're like, oh, oh okay. You understand? And so, or you put up, you dress up and you're going for a function and people are like, hey, she's a teacher. And she's dressing like that. Wow. People have certain perception about teachers. Teachers are poor, teachers are girls, teachers are that. But um, I personally don't see teachers as, as such. You mm. understand? I personally don't see teachers as such. People have some mentality about teachers. You even sitting in class and then you're talking about profession. And the kids are not even mentioning your own profession. They are, they are mentioning other professions. And then you have to come back to yeah. educate them on why they have to look at the teaching profession. No. I think it's because they, they, they don't see it too in high school, of course. Mm. So they feel that. Let me go to the profession that you can see a lot of them driving cars, a lot of them building big machines and all. Because they don't really see teachers doing all this. Mm. You understand? Yeah, I do. So and that is that is that is all that. Yeah, and you you've spoken of how teaching is a calling, uh, yeah. and of course a vocation, and you have been selected amongst teachers to be the best for 2017. No doubt there are other teachers who excel like you, but would you say that that is the majority? Uh, if we look at the teaching profession yeah. as a whole in Ghana, is the quality actually there? I would say yes. The quality is there. People are doing well. Of course, we, um, um, with, with maybe the budget or whatever is going on, the government can, may not be able to identify all as a goal. That's why it's an annual thing, so that if you have your friend this year, another year someone else will have the chance. Because as for quality teachers, we have them. They are there, mm. and they are doing well. So, obviously, you get the kids at the very beginning of their <laughs> primary uh, life, uh, primary one. Uh, but we all know that by the time Ghanaian children are coming out of basic education, 90% of them can't understand what they read. Well, 60% of them can't read at all. And the extra 30 that can read don't quite understand what they read. Uh, what needs to be done uh, for teaching well, to be more effective? Well, I would want to comment here that um, most often you realize that majority of the children in the government schools are kids that are living with other people. Majority of them. So you realize that the attention is not there hmm. on them. Most of the people they're living with would want to say that send my child to school because the person could be a busy parent to send my child to school before you go to your school. Even if the child is a supplementary reader, no one is there to pay for that. And other material, because of course education is free for um, across um, the basic education, and so they'll dress up and come and then sit down. You meet some of them in the classroom, and then even learning materials they do not have. Simple pencil, simple pen, book, they are not having, but they've been pushed to come to the school. They've been pushed to come to sit in the classroom. Um, talking of they being able to read. Reading should be an everyday thing so that the child shouldn't only have the experience when he or she is in the class. Mm, we expect that even after class, you should have something. 
That's an important point but you've made. But after class, majority of them have a whole lot of things to do. How stores would be allow them to do anything? They spend it, some of them get so much tired. They finish and retire to bed around 10, 10 plus 11. And so even you send homework, they send them home and they bring them back and done. Right. Who, who, well, who, even, who even supervise them to do their homework or who does their homework before them? Just the majority of them just don't care about what. But compared to the child in the private school, say anything and the parents are ready to support. Say I see anything. what you mean. And yeah. Majority of them. So I guess it's not just down own. to the teacher. Uh, it's important that. Um, everybody participates in the education of their child. Faustina Copson is uh, the 2017 uh, National Best Teacher, doing wonders with young children in Primary 1. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it very much. Well, there you go then. Teachers being celebrated around mm. the world today. Yeah, there's mm. a statement that's been issued, signed by Education Minister Dr. Matthew Pocoprempe, but the theme for... Uh, this year's uh, Teachers' Day, which comes with the prize awards, is the right to education means the right to a qualified teacher. And in the statement, they say, improving teacher education in Ghana benefits everyone, improving learning outcomes, and inspiring young people to become lifelong learners, benefiting Ghana's economy and her continued progress as a nation. The government of Ghana is therefore committed to a number of measures to ensure that the Ghanaian teacher is equipped for the needs of the 21st century, including the introduction of the teacher li licensure regime to improve professionalization and alignment with global standards and the upgrading of our colleges of education to university colleges of education to deliver a bachelor of education program to promote teacher quality. So yeah, this is contained yeah. in that statement that's been issued, uh, signed by Education Minister, mm. Dr. Matthew Pukwempe. Well, to all teachers, uh, there are stories in the paper today uh, from some organizations celebrating teachers as well. I guess it's congratulations to all teachers today. Indeed. It's your day. Enjoy it. Yeah, well done to you all. Okay, let's read a few headlines quickly. Uh, Daily Guide has these. Judges' discretionary powers worry Nana. Really? He should check out the president's discretionary powers. <laughs> okay, Justice uh, VCRAC Crab goes home yesterday mm. in a very uh, um, classy ceremony. He was sent along his peaceful journey. Um, Ministry of Food and Agriculture blasts minority over cocoa price. And this rather confusing, I don't know whether it's a combination of headlines or whether it's one headline, but it says at the top, blows in NDC over 2016 election results. And then right beneath it, it says, man stones wife to death. It's, hmm. it's uh, laid out in a way that some might imagine, is suggesting that a man stones his wife to death as part of the blues in NDC over the 2016 election results. But it is definitely not the case. Uh, all the details are within the Daily Guide. Daily Graphic has these. More traffic lights down in Accra. <laughs> Were we just talking mm. about this this morning? Uh, also, biggest plane to Ghana, uh, good for country's image, according to Captain Quenu. I'm yet to be convinced of that argument. I think uh, Emirates have done a great PR job for themselves uh, by getting everybody excited over it. But I don't know how I have benefited from this big plane landing at Terminal. Well, no, you, maybe not you directly, but for the industry, it's a, it's a plus. Is it? it shows that... They are dedicated to a route in West Africa in such a way that they are even willing to bring the or assign the biggest plane on the route. Do you know um, when they started flying that plane? 2005. Well, so, 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 uh, so 13 years after they manufactured it, it is now Ghana's 10. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't see that. Tesla has been manufacturing cars. It's never been to Ghana or Africa. So exactly. So we're always behind in many things. So when they come, but I won't be it's celebrating. Progress. It's progress in many I things. Wonder. We don't always have to be pessimistic about many things. Anyway. Maybe you're right. UMB and GES promote education in six schools, and human trafficking ambassador and honor Joyce Lynn Tete is the one mm. saying <coughs> that. That's quite uh, interesting. Yes. Uh, and uh, 220 guards to be deployed to mining communities. That's on the back page. Also, 34 illegal tourism facilities closed down in the Volta region. What is an illegal tourism facility, I wonder? Uh, you can I learn guess more. one not accredited. Yes, okay. Right then, so what else have we got? Uh, let's do the Finder newspaper and we'll do the Times. The Finder first, front page of the Finder today. Cocoa price is fair deal. Deputy Minister sets record straight. 
pregnant woman arrested for inserting object into vagina of eight year old. Oh, St. Theresa's Hospital at Nandom facing challenges and Ghana pays tribute to one of her greatest sons, Justice VCRAC Crap. Let's do the Ghanaian Times front page 2018 2019 Cocoa Producer Prize Politics. Government fumes at minority, and you've got a picture of a deputy agriculture minister, Kennedy Oseyakum, and Kesel Atto forcing from the minority NDC. Mm. Nine arrested for attacking Mankasim District police. Nigerian leader vows to secure abducted schoolgirls' release. Implementation of free SHS, government building knowledge-based economy, according to Vice President. Restore confidence in the banking sector, AGI urges Bank of Ghana, and Justice Crab laid to rest at 95. Back page of the Times. Ministry of Food and Agriculture approves three new cowpea varieties for northern region. 200 farmers receive support to grow cowpea. So... Uh, those are the stories on the back page of the paper today. Mm. Okay. All right, so let's look at the publisher. And this one uh, is quelled from myjohnline.com. It says, EC chairs husband fires. I don't care if she's MPP or NDC. That's what he said. <laughs> uh, we also now have workers' contributions saved. Uh, yes. Snits, crap, lay to rest. What were you expecting? <laughs> <laughs> um... MPP loyal to cocoa farmers, welfare minister, and uh, we have man stoning wife 32 to death. That was a, a very bizarre incident. Mm. Mm. Uh, we also have um, the front page of the Daily Statesman newspaper. It says, uh, what is Amidu doing to help uh, Ghana fight corruption? Uh, they also bring you petroleum price indicator indicators are as of 2nd October 2018 and then uh, we have other stories uh, the main banner headline government scores high marks on anti-corruption fights it does uh, government maintain cocoa price to improve farmers welfare agri ministry so the stories are there mm. so physically there will be the stories okay mm. shall i rifle through the daily yeah. dispatch headlines again uh, they have two stories from the interview with um, dr charles mensa uh, iea founder on appointment of 110 ministers president did it to please old politicians yeah he said that's what he thinks uh, judiciary angry over a reduction in salaries through new tax oh yeah that new tax kicks in uh, this <laughs> one there uh, rich people like <coughs> England and Mama V will be feeling the pinch. Uh, some of us, we know you're talking care. about yourself oh, because please, when please, this please, thing please. first happened, <laughs> you froze on air. <laughs> you were doing the calculation <laughs> on air. <laughs> so this is the time to really feel it. Oh boy! So it's well. going to be affected in like this salary so. that is yet to yet to come. I, I believe so. Yeah. Uh, mm. we're, we're waiting for the alerts. Mm. <laughs> Judiciary angry over reduction in salaries through new tax. Yes. Uh, prison officers snatching our wives. Uh, prison inmates allege. Oh my word. Scary thought. On the back page, my wife as EC chair will be independent and fair to all. Again, uh, from uh, the interview that I had with Dr. Charles Mensah. Okay, what do you want to talk about? I am interested in this one. The president did it to please old politicians. This was Dr. Charles Mensah's opinion that he shared with me in the interview. Um, that the appointment of 110 ministers was something that the president did just because he wanted to please That's his um, opinion. old politicians. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I don't know. It, you see, the thing that led us to that conversation was, was China. We're talking about China. And the fact that we're going to set up this bauxite um, you know, processing facility. And he said that if we make any mistake in the running of that facility, we will default on the terms of our agreement with China, and we will lose something big to China, like how other countries have. So the president needs to avoid this by, by being disciplined and by appointing technocrats to run institutions like that, rather than politicians. So I asked him, is he sure the president would do that? I mean, this is the president who appointed 110 ministers. Um, did you know that when he set up the Coastal Development Authority, in addition to its CEO, he appointed three deputies. 
you know, um, the president is not afraid of creating jobs and filling those jobs with the people around him, people is from his party. Is he creating jobs uh, I th I, or perhaps uh, he's trying to create offices that would execute a certain plan or agenda? Yeah. I think and, that's and more and like No, he's creating jobs. So he's created the uh, facility, which has a mandate, a job to do, and within the facility he's created a number of jobs. So that is accurate. So yeah, you know, we, we, we talked about that and that led him to say, well, to be honest, he thinks the president himself knows that it's time for a lean government. That, um, in, you know, th those appointments that he did at the beginning were, in his opinion, to please old politicians. I think meaning he, he had to bring in the old politicians to come and, and uh, do a mix with the current generation. I don't quite know what he meant by old politicians, but I guess... That the is, idea you don't know is what uh, Dr. Charles Dr. Charles Mesa, yes. Yeah. But I guess the idea is that uh, he believes that the president created jobs to please politicians. Well, 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 one thing I do know, though, Dr. Charles Mesa is not alone in sharing this opinion. We've had mm. some civil society organizations come to say, mm. uh, indeed, if you look at the, across the developed world, we have uh, many of the top countries around the world not having more than 36 or 30 or even 40 ministers. Mm. Um, manning various uh, agencies, but it's also because they have a very effective civil service um, that has uh, more of the technocrats. In yeah. our case, we've rendered many of the so-called technocrats in the civil uh, service subservient mm. to the politicians of the day, and, it, and we've seen it in the Fourth Republic. So yeah. even though we have competent people, that is, if we tax them, supervise them, and hold them um, to order and say that, look, you have this KPI, you're supposed to meet it, and this is uh, how it needs to interface or align or realign with our agenda. I think mm. that's what we've not been able to do. Yeah. We've not been able to exert or get the best out of our civil service. But that tells As a you result something. of that, when the politician comes, he feels that I need to appoint people to execute that sort of agenda. But that tells you something. It goes back to that one thing we've always not been good at, and that's planning. You know, because if we were planning, we would understand what sort of manpower we need to execute each agenda. Mm. You know, so that when you are putting someone there, you understand that this man is going to need this size of a team to do the job. And is it always the size of team? Or should we be employing technology, innovation? Should we, should we be cross-working? You know, so that we don't need that many people to do, you know, one thing. Uh, I saw someone sent me a picture of the Japanese cabinet. Uh, Shinzo Abe, Premier Shinzo Abe and his men, all together, not more than 30 people running the country. That's Japan. Their population is more than us. Mm. Their nation size is bigger than us. Economy their, their economy is, is probably the second or third ter biggest <laughs> economy in the world. Yeah. You know? Even in South Africa, they don't have many. So, uh, so, I, so I, you I ask yourself, are. is it really numbers that we need to execute? But the president said something which... Uh, you know, at the time when he was asked about it, he said, wait until the end to decide whether or not my, my to, to, to judge whether or not my decision to appoint 110 ministers was the right one. But or I not. think in, in that regard, the president um, is, is given the right to voice that opinion because uh, he has been given the mandate to rule yes, yes, and just, also execute a certain agenda based on which um, the voters gave him the power to yeah. be in It's not about his rights. The president, in fact, he, he, uh, the president, in fact uh, has, has been complaining about the judge's discretionary powers. He has more discretionary powers than anyone in this country. Because so it is, yes, it, so it is his right. <laughs> no one is <laughs> taking that right away from him. But when he makes decisions, mm. we as the people who is making the decision on our behalf, we have a right is to, there an overwhelming, to, to express is there, is there, is there our an overwhelming view on it. opinion across the country that I don't know. the ministers are too many? I don't know. You tell yeah. me. Yeah. I think we, me. we have some vociferous mm. opinion yeah. uh, out there, but yeah. I don't know whether it's a, it, yeah. it is a But by saying that we should wait until the end before we judge whether he's made the right decision or not, I don't know what the point of that is. By the end, won't it be too late? Isn't it now that we should Maybe decide whether then, the decision is good or bad? So end, that if it's bad, then the next it can time be we changed? Then it means that the next time we don't give the leeway to another executive. By then it will be too late, unless, I'm, <laughs> unless you disagree well, yeah, with me. Yeah. Mamabi, what do you reckon? <laughs> Mamabi's cool has come. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else have we got? Okay, so uh, we have um, the biggest plane to Ghana, good for the country's image. And... Um,
well, not is not that you voice our opinion in this agreement, but I think that um, there's a lot more we can do for our aviation industry by looking at what some of the best countries tend to do. The development of the aviation industry needs to go in tandem, or needs to be in tandem with the development of our country, because it's about affordability. If people can't afford then it means that you have no aviation industry. And mm. that's why we are where we are currently. Uh, and so we, we are giving licenses to companies to come and operate airlines, but we have to ask, mm. is it affordable? Do they have the traffic to make it affordable for the ordinary people? Yeah. And we have failed in line with providing the public proper transport. And that includes not only air but also rail and then the road transport absolutely to make it f to make it effective for people to afford and also use it but it also brings to mind how we don't have a plan for anything and that has been the basis for where we are yeah. because if we had a plan by this time we should have known that we needed to have um, a rail system in place that could commute that way or that, that will yeah yeah, yeah uh, tra transit people from Accra to Kumasi, mm. or even to Tamale, yeah. or to Wa, mm. so that nobody would have to, because of the plan we have, exert more pressure on the roads. Yeah. So you don't, you know that the money you're spending in 2018 for a road that will lead you to Kumasi is going to last so so and so date because the pressure is not excessive. Mm. You're not going to have cargo trucks commuting laterite or raw materials of bauxite from mm. somewhere in Sakwa or the areas where we have them extractive industry mm. or through the main roads of Takradi, Cape Coast, come to <coughs> Kaswa, come to Accra mm. and then uh, destroy those that you have invested in such a way that in the short term you have to do a replacement. And that has an overbearing effect on the budgets that we have and how and how we spend as a country. I've got to say, and I, and, I, and, 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 and and that's where I'm, I'm picking yeah. it from. I, I think I, this is good for the aviation industry, for the PR and all that. But but I I, 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 I like how you've it. expanded the the discussion. I think it's very important that it's a transport discussion, yeah. not just an aviation discussion. Yeah. But even sticking to aviation, look, as a country, we have really not maximized the b benefits of aviation. Uh, aviation technology can be used to solve all kinds of problems, even in agriculture, you know, uh, in healthcare. So, so what we have really not maximized it because we haven't paid attention to it. Mm. When this aircraft was coming, I wonder which state institutions engaged with um, with Airbus or with Emirates to understand, you know, what's the technology involved in this aircraft. What is it that we as a nation can do to enhance our own aviation sector so that more of such aircraft will be able to land here, will be able to pass through here, transit through here, and so forth? Because larger numbers are good for our aviation industry as well. What is the technology that is being used by companies like Airbus that we can also take advantage of in other sectors of our economic development? If someone in our government was having a conversation with these people who have spent so much money and effort to promote the arrival of this aircraft, we may have picked up something, we may have learned something, we may have benefited in some other way that would, uh, that would be good for some other aspect of our national lives. But once again, like you said, no planning. Nobody took the initiative. They've come, they've gone. We are interviewing the pilot, end of story. No, he doesn't even live in Ghana, does No, he, he doesn't, yeah. yeah. So he will go to. <laughs> if, uh, indeed, if he was in Ghana, I'm not sure. But he's a, inspiring. A school, his his yeah. story is inspiring yeah, a yeah. lot of people. Yes, mm. yeah. and that is good. That mm. is good. And uh, in fact, I think we need more of those. Mm. So um, it's it's a good thing that we've ha got to hear his story. Uh, but who's next? Yes. Yeah. And the, and the last time I was thinking about him, I said, if this man was in Ghana, hmm. would he and decided to become a pilot the way of the magnitude? Would he have a plane? to be you know he surely would have would have gotten a plane are you talking about in terms of a bigger plane because we've got pilots in ghana yeah, i'm talking about piloting I'm, I'm, I'm talking about i'm talking about would he have African gotten world ha, would he have got into the states 
at which he is currently, and that's what because, for example, he would, it would have um, taken maybe a, a lot longer. We would have been a lot slower, longer. He would have he, he would, would have gone on pension by then. Nobody can that's, stop you from getting to where where you would have gone on pension intended. by then. That's a problem. But there's a story <laughs> in the in the Ghanaian Times uh, filed to us by our colleague in the central region, Richard Kojinya, who I thought would spend a little time. Maybe not, but you know, just go through it. Uh, it says nine people from a confi a some in the confi district of the central region have been arrested by the central regional police command in connection with an attack on the Mankasim district police on Tuesday evening. So a taxi driver had uh, over, overloaded, allegedly, uh, was stopped. He refused to, got to the next checkpoints, uh, still refused. But at that point, police chased him. Uh, and following his arrest, about 50 people besieged the police station. Uh, and then they, they, they decided to destroy anything they could see. And the accounts is that they also assaulted two policemen on duty at the charge office. That's the Mankasim police station. Uh, and, and so eight, no, nine persons have been arrested. Uh, but this is what we've been talking about. Vandalism. People thinking that they have a right to either go and um, pull people when they have been arrested, when they've done the wrong thing, and not allowing mm. the law to work. Uh, so same thing that we're seeing with the story. We hope that there will be justice will be served in the end. But if you have a dream of working in Parliament, you might want to grab the Ghanaian Times. There are some openings in Parliament. You, you don't have to get people to vote for you. You just have to be qualified. Mm. Oh, you mean as an administrative person? <laughs> yes. Quite a number of openings. I think that lure of Parliament is uh, to be an MP. <laughs> Except that I think with what I'm seeing, you need you need a legal background to be able to do this. Mm. So good luck. You if can you grab are, the paper by the way. If you're a clerk of Parliament, you mm. also enjoy some privileges. Yeah, like sure. you can't be arrested on your way to, <laughs> on your way from, or at Parliament. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you commit a no crime, bad. you'll be arrested. I think there's a certain limitation to that sort of right. Is that mm. true? The, yeah. pa the parliamentarians themselves don't agree, and they always mm. insist. If whenever, you commit a crime, even the police went to crime. the police went to somebody's house mm. to arrest him for mm. allegedly assaulting someone. Mm -hmm. they, and and the speaker of parliament said they have abused his privilege. His well, house. That, well, well, that's true. Well, that's how. But I'm, I'm I'm not talking in that context. I'm mm. talking. You're talking about if you, if you're caught committing the yeah. crime. Yes. If you're caught, you've got nothing to do with. Maybe you're caught committing a crime and you say I'm on my way to Parliament. They can't arrest you. No, it's not true. Hey, it is the oh, law. Yeah, no okay. Uh, so we have to go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> if you but shoot somebody uh, on the street, right? South Africa first. The president of South Africa is also declaring South Africa first, but it's not in the same contest as we know okay. it. It's more of like Ghana beyond aid, but this has to do with job creation. I think the biggest challenge for South Africans today, for the country really, is the young people not getting jobs. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, I hope that is not a policy that gets misinterpreted by the people of South Which Africa. Which was the South Africa first? We, we've seen, yes, we've mm. seen uh, xenophobia at its worst in South Africa. Mm. You know, people killing foreigners because of jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially so, Nigeria. Uh, yes. Yeah. So let, let's, uh, let's hope that the, the, this policy is translated in a way that everybody understands and whatever they need to do to protect mm -hmm. uh, South African jobs and also create more jobs for everyone. Yeah. Uh, I hope they are able to succeed in that without killing anyone. We'll do myjoyonline.com real quick and make way for sports on myjoyonline.com this day. George Quay resigns from Men's Gold, the head of communications at gold dealership firm Men's Gold. George Quay has resigned. Asijo. What does that mean? City to end Asijo. year worse Asijo. than in 2017, huh? according to Issa. Issa is predicting that the city would depreciate far more cumulatively this year than it did in 2017, given happenings on both the internal and external fronts. Well, well. Buffer Stock Company blacklist 70 food suppliers under free SHS policy. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> Our Greek minister will never ask co uh, for Coco Board Bangalore. Mm. Uh, that's according to his deputy speaking yesterday on News Night. Okay. It's interesting. We haven't heard from the Greek minister himself. Yeah. But I think, I think that the deputy and the way he was speaking, you know, sometimes when people come into office, the way they communicate is you could have had... Uh, it's a, reality a, on a the very, ground. A, Lecturer a, backs a, very, a free anchor a on corrupt talk. system. And it's fucking well. 
Mm. And who tells him that if he leaves? Board him, allowance can't, can't increase can't by 729 percent. Workers want PMMC MD sacked, and one of the things they said in that memo. Uh, that we got hold of yesterday was the fact that he traveled, he goes almost everywhere with his PRO, and he never did so with a previous PRO who happened to be a man. And coincidentally, they all took their leave, same day, return, same day. Please, how is that coincidental? Well, <laughs> <laughs> hey. yes, the PRO is a lady. Um, <laughs> it and was she, part of the things contained in that memo. Uh, we're not you know her? It were not a Mormons, Latter day Saints. Oh, uh, uh, I read clarifies. the name. When I read the name, I knew that she was waiting for me. Hey! <laughs> PRO don't travel with MDs unless they are busy. Coco Board CEO salary <laughs> in in trivia. Gamma reject minority of a spending claim. Okay, listen, we'll leave with the rest of the story for you. Just go on myjoyaline.com uh, and, and check out the story. Oh, that's some cover. Yeah, you guys are still talking about the P PMMC, eh? You know, exactly. yesterday, I went to, Can you imagine <laughs> that? Favorite story. I, 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 was, I, was, I was just about getting onto the motorway. I had stopped through the mall. And then I came to sit in the car, then I heard the thing. The thing was running through my mind. Ah, I went to buy Kinky. <laughs> went to buy KK, going to chop for a house. <laughs> and the thing, I was, I, I, was, thought I, was the, I thought it was the PA they then travel my, with. I didn't think it was a well, PRO. I think you, 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 you no. make do with what you I have. I should get a PRO so, job then. So, so wait a moment. <laughs> well, you want to, tra you want to yeah, travel, travel with I want to go moment. everywhere with my Ma boss. Ma Ma so, and take leave at the same time. Now we know. <laughs> Now this is your call that you had yesterday. Wait, know. wait, wait, wait. Who else was uh, was off sick yesterday? Uh, <laughs> Mama B had a call. My boss Elvis. Oh, okay. Did he report yesterday? Please, I didn't say I, anything. I, I, I'm told he, you are coming. He's <laughs> now in. Oh, he's Elvis in. Elvis is now in. Oh, he's welcome back. Okay, this is Mama B. You're also welcome Same back. That. We've got sports coming. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't understand why you, you, hey, you decided. To